Alright guys, I just finished uh, one outs for the third time so I can make you a video on why you should watch this anime if you haven't given it a chance already. This anime is so well done. It's a baseball anime, but even if you don't like sports animes, you don't like baseball, I would definitely recommend that you watch it anyways because this is so much more than a baseball anime. Um, so to give you a little bit of a synopsis of how it starts is there's a gambler type character named Tokuchitoa. He's the main character of the show. A lot of people like to compare him to Ahsoka by the way he looks, but he's actually like the reincarnation of Akagi. If you haven't seen Akagi, I definitely recommend that one as well because they are very similar characters. Even have the same voice actor, that's how similar they are. But he's a gambling, he plays this game called One Outs, and basically what it is, it's a game just between the batter and the pitcher. And this is a very prevalent, like, point throughout the anime is that it, the show is mainly about his one-on-one -on -one battles with characters um, and that's what it focuses on is his ability to like manipulate people's personalities their like ticks anything he like completely analyzes somebody and their like personalities the situation they're put in and how that's going to make them think and he can almost like the thing that Akagi and him do, it's almost like a superpower, but it's not. It's just from their, like, sheer intellect and their, like, knowledge of the situation that they can, like, pretty much read people's minds. Like, they know what the person is thinking before they think it, and they use it to their advantage completely. And I like One Outs a little bit better in Akagi than this fact, because one, the animation's better, because Akagi, the creator, sticks to that same animation style. He uses it for Kaiji, Akagi, and almost any other work he does, which I can watch past because the shows are awesome and the plots are usually really good and suspenseful and that's something these type of animes have. They like always know how to keep it interesting. If they don't keep it interesting, like automatically kills the show. It's something that has to be done. It's what keeps like a lot of people that watch this anime, one of their comments will be like, I don't even like baseball. I just want to see what this guy's gonna do. Because, like, some of the, he's against, like, every scenario. Like, that's how they keep it fresh. He's, like, against every scenario possible. He's against a team that's the best team with, like, the super players. And he has to figure out a way to manipulate that. And then he's against a team that has, like, these strategies that are meant to be, like, perfect against him. Has to figure out a way to overcome that. And then he's against a team that just straight up cheats. And he has to figure out a way from that, too. And the reason why he's very likable is a lot of people think he's like a shady scumbag character because he makes his life by gambling baseball. Um, but he's not really that. Like, the, he does a very good job of, um, it's like, uh, freak. Like, he sticks to his morals. Like, he'll play, if he tells you the rules, he will stick to those rules no matter how, um, how they're abused or not even abuse, but how people like use them to their advantage. That's something that's very important to him throughout the anime slash manga. Because he is also somebody that, like, everybody thinks that he doesn't know anything about baseball because he made his whole living off this one-outs game, which is the name of the show. And basically what that is, is it's a one-on-one -on -one battle with the pitcher where he has to strike him out, or he has to make it where the ball lands within the infield. So if they, like, hit it past the infield, it's an automatic win for the pitch, uh, batter, which kind of puts the pitcher at, like, a disadvantage because Tokuchi Toa is not physically super gifted or anything like that. He has one thing that he can do that's pretty neat, but it's nothing that's going to make him, like, a professional caliber skill baseball player. Like, characters reference that all the time. It's, a, it's not that he's a great pitcher. It's that he has, like, a really strong spirit, and he knows... How people are going to react which makes it very easy for him to like choose his pitches against other batters and so from a game like he has like 499 wins one loss and that one loss results in him joining a minor league baseball team that's the worst team in the league and trying to make them a championship caliber team and so this is important because like I said, it's Akagi, or not Akagi, Tokuchi Toa versus, a, it's like a one-on-one -on -one battle because like, usually in baseball animes you'll see other characters make mistakes and that'll impact the game. That's not a thing here. It's literally Tokuchi versus whatever is going on in the game. Or like, um, his main antagonist in the series is the 
owner of the team because the owner of the team doesn't really want the team to succeed. He just wants to make money. So, and he sees Toa as a scumbag because he's not a professional baseball player that came from like regular means. He came from gambling and doesn't. Um, he just sees him as a low life scumbag that just um, has no respect for anything, and he just keeps trying to screw Toa. That's like his whole goal in the series is figure out a way to screw him over, and he comes up with like some pretty nasty plots throughout the thing, which keeps it super interesting. Because some of the challenge he faces, this is my third time rewatching it, and it still shocks me with, like, the challenges that he has to put up with. Like, they're very intense, and it, like, keeps you on the edge of your seat. Like, when I start watching this, it's one of those shows where I have to watch it back to back to back to back, because it's, one episode leads into the next episode leads into the next episode, and it's really hard to pull yourself away from. Like, I literally watched this from yesterday night to today, and it's 25 episodes. And I just pretty much knocked it out because I really enjoy watching it. I usually come back to it like every three years because then I've kind of forgotten some of the things that happen. And it just shocks me all over again, which is awesome. Um, And he's like the epitome, him and Akagi are like the epitome of a badass character to me because they're always super calm. And they realize that some things come down to luck. They're not... um, overpowering anybody usually they're manipulating people to give themselves an advantage from their intelligence and their like street smarts it's like street smarts and they look at things different than other players that's what some of the players say they're like i wish i could see what he sees through his eyes because he like notices things that nobody else notices like one game they're playing against the best team in the league and everybody's looking at the past records of the team and like how good they are and whatnot. And he's like, you guys should be watching the players as what they're doing now, like their habits or anything like that, because we're not playing against the player, their stats. We're playing against them today, what they're going to do today. So it doesn't matter if we match up our stats, obviously we're going to lose because their stats are better than ours because they're the best team in the league. But that doesn't mean they're going to play better than us today. And then everybody's like, oh. And, like, the whole team hates him at the start because he's very cocky. Not really cocky, confident. He's super confident. And that's something he'll tell you multiple times when people question him. He's like, they're like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. He's like, I'm 100% confident this is going to work. And he usually is right. Um, and the ending ends too early for this anime. This is one where I actually had to read the manga because I love the anime so much. And it has a great ending in the manga. I don't know why they didn't finish it. I don't know if it was budget or what, but it was really well done. And the opening is completely in English, done by a Japanese band, but the English actually sounds pretty good, which is strange, because even throughout the anime, when like a character speaks English, it's like that broken kind of English that like a Japanese person speaking it usually does in animes, and it's sometimes hilarious, like how bad it is. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, and it's... Animes like this are like the gambling type animes where it's always, um, somebody else tried to do this recently, Kakiguri, I didn't like that one as much, but these are the shows, I love these shows because they're not really like, it's not really a sports anime, it's more of a psychological thriller, which is like my favorite thing, I like to see how people, when they're put in certain situations, are going to react, and stuff like that, and, um, he uses things like sleight of hand and stuff like that, which is really cool. I've always found that stuff kind of fascinating. Um, it's kind of like a magician, but obviously they just kind of fool your eye and they do stuff like that. But he's somebody that's like pretty morally like consistent. He does. If somebody cheats against him, he thinks it's equally fair for him to cheat against them. But if they don't cheat, he's going to use the rules as well as he can to get like the best possible outcome. But he doesn't, he probably won't cheat against them if they're not cheating against him. But he will push the limits of the rules. He'll, like, look at it, and he will he shows you a lot of things about baseball that I didn't know, Japanese baseball. Um, definitely doesn't show you much about the Japanese baseball world as much as Gurzini, because I think it's a minor league team anyways, which kind of makes it more realistic for his, like, actual pitching power, because he's not an exceptional, like, strength pitcher for, like, what he throws. Um, and yeah, it, I would recommend watching it. If you don't watch it, it starts out pretty strong from the start, so 
you'll know probably pretty early in the anime if you like it or not. Um, I'll give it t till at least like the first arc where they like act he's actually on the baseball team and he's competing against the team. But um, everybody that I've seen that's watched it usually enjoys it. You gotta be a little bit patient with it, I guess, because like the first four episodes, first two episodes. I think just kind of segue him into how he got into the team, which I thought those episodes were super interesting within themselves, but it just gets better and better. Like, the challenges he faces just keeps... It's The challenges he faces aren't only different, they're... Um, or not even just more intense, they're different. Like, it's a different challenge every time. It's not the same thing. Like, in a shonen anime, it's always like, we power up, we fight, we're stronger now, we win. And this, it's like... He's already got his tools. Like, he's already got all the tools he's going to have. And he has to figure out how to use them to win to the best of his ability. Which keeps the show super interesting, I think. Because it's not a montage. He never does any training. He's not going to get any stronger than he already is. He's just smart. And he now, um, approaches every situation head on. Like a brand new like task. So you don't see things repeated a lot in the show, which is really nice. It keeps it really fresh and entertaining. But yeah, if you haven't watched it, I would get, I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's probably in my top ten animes for sure. And I'm going to have to watch... Gam There's one anime that's kind of similar to it that I want to do a review on. It's called Leg Legendary Gambler Tetsuya. It came out in 2000. And it's one of the more obscure animes I've seen. And it's got kind of like the similar thing with Akagi. It's a Mahjong gambling anime and sleight of hand and stuff. And it's really... I remember it being really good, but I haven't watched it in forever. But uh, if you watch it, let me know what you think of it, and if you've already watched it, tell me what you thought of it anyways, and maybe you have some points that I missed. Um, but thanks for watching, as always. I appreciate you guys watching, and anything, um, feel free to ask me anything. I love to talk to people. I know that nobody really leaves a comment, but if you do, I'll try to get back to it. Alright, thanks again, guys. Bye.